Here's a review of the reactions of alkynes that we've learned so far. Alkynes can be produced by performing a double elimination reaction on an alkyl dihalide. Up above we have a geminal dihalide where the two X atoms, um, which are either chlorine, bromine, or iodine, are located on the same carbon, that is one from being terminal. Down below, we have a vicinal dihalide, where the two halogen atoms are on neighboring carbons. In either case, we're going to do a double elimination reaction where our reagents are first excess sodium amide and of course the solvent you need is ammonia and in our second step we're going to work it up with water this will drive the reaction forward and the product of the double elimination reaction is a terminal alkyne We can take the terminal alkyne back to the geminal dihalide by simply reacting with excess halo acid. Like if we wanted to have both of these be chlor both of these X atoms be chlorines, we'd use excess HCl, but it works with HBr and HI as well. If we wanted to take our terminal alkyne back to a vicinal dihalide, we'd need two steps. First, we'd need to reduce our alkyne to an alkene using hydrogen in the poison catalyst, like Lindlar's, or um, P2. We could then perform halogenation on the alkene. Using a halogen molecule in carbon tetrachloride. If we use one equivalent of halo acid to do hydrohalogenation on a terminal alkyne. So here the halo acid can be hydrochloric, hydrobromic, or hydroiodic. We will get the vinylic alkyl halide. Where the halogen molecule is attached to the internal sp2 hybridized carbon. We can also do anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination if we use HBr and peroxide. And in this case we get a mixture of the E and Z products. To do acid-catalyzed hydration, we use sulfuric acid, water, and mercuric sulfate. The result is the Markovnikov product, where we end up with a methyl ketone. The reagents for Hydroboration oxidation. For the hydroboration step, you start out with a dialkyl borane, R2BH, like disamyl borane or 9BBN. And in our second step, the oxidation step, it's the same as it would be for an alkene, sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. And this gives us an aldehyde.
because this is anti-Markovnikov hydration. Halogenation is accomplished by one equivalent of a halogen molecule, X2, where X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And this needs to be done in carbon tetrachloride. Our major product is trans, suggesting that the dominant mechanism is anti-addition. But we also get some cis. The mechanism is not fully understood. If we use excess halogen, where the halogen atom is either chlorine or bromine but not iodine, we end up with an alkyl tetrahalide where two equivalents of halogen molecule have added to replace both of the pi bonds. Ozonolysis of a terminal alkyne. First, you bubble ozone through solution, and then you work it up with water, and you end up with a carboxylic acid, and carbon dioxide. Ozonolysis of an internal alkyne ends up with two acids. However, a better route to get the two carboxylic acids is to first reduce the alkyne to an alkene. And if we use Linlar's catalyst, we'll get the cisalkene. If we use the dissolving metal reduction, we'll get the transalkene. If we then do ozonolysis of our alkenes, first bubbling ozone through solution, but then using hydrogen peroxide instead of DMS, we get the two carboxylic acids and we get it in a higher yield than just ozonolysis of the alkyne. Alkylation only works with the terminal alkyne but first we treat it with one equivalent of sodium amide. That's going to deprotonate the uh, alkyne and make an alkynide ion. In the second step, we use an alkyl halide as an electrophile, and the alkyne is going to do SN2 attack. This will give us an internal alkyne. It's very important that the alkyl halide we use be either primary or methyl. Otherwise, you'll get an elimination reaction. So, treating our terminal alkyne with sodium amide followed by ethyl bromide, this replaces the H with an ethyl group. This ethyl group here is tacked onto our alkyne over here. Treating an internal alkyne with hydrogen and Linlar's catalyst or hydrogen and P2, which is an Ni2B complex. These are both poison catalysts and they give cis alkene. If we want a different stereochemical outcome, we treat our internal alkyne with sodium in ammonia. Do not confuse this with sodium amide. Then we get the transalkene.
if you have a terminal alkyne and you reduce it to an alkene, you end up with the terminal alkene, which is neither cis nor trans. So you can use either method. And if you do catalytic hydrogenation of an alkyne where you don't use a poison catalyst, so H2 and platinum or palladium, you just get an alkane. You reduce all the way. For now, this is a synthetic dead end, so we should avoid it. Actually, we'll learn how to deal with an alkane when we get to the chapter on radicals, but for now, you're stuck if you get all the way to an alkane.